All right, folks, today we're building something so powerful, so stylish, and so incredibly over-engineered, we're talking about a fully responsive navigation bar with multi-level dropdowns. That's right, not just one dropdown, but dropdowns and side dropdowns. Because why settle for basic when you can go full-on developer flex mode? Before we dive in, a massive thank you to our amazing Patreon supporters who help keep this channel running. You guys are absolute legends. If you want to grab the source code for this project, you can join our Patreon family for as little as $3 a month. That's like half a cup of fancy coffee, but way more useful. All right, before we jump into the actual HTML structure, let's make sure we have everything set up properly. First, create a new project folder. You can name it whatever you like, maybe responsive nav bar. Inside this folder, we'll need three essential files. Index.html. This will be our main HTML file, where we structure the navbar and the content. Style.css. This is our CSS file, which will handle all the styling, colors, and responsiveness of the navbar. Script.js. This is the JavaScript file, which will make the mobile menu and dropdowns interactive. Once you've created these three files inside your project folder, make sure to link the CSS and JavaScript inside the HTML file, so they work together. So, let's break down the structure of this navigation bar. First up, we have the nav tag, which wraps the entire nav bar. Inside it, there's an A tag with the class logo, acting as a placeholder for a site logo or brand name. Right next to it, there's a span element with the class menu, toggle. This little guy is the hamburger icon that appears on smaller screens, letting users toggle the menu on mobile devices. Now, let's talk about the main menu. It's built using an unordered list DL with the class menu. Inside this list, there are several Lee items, each representing a different menu option. The first one is Home, a simple link. Then we have the Services section. This is a drop-down menu, which means it contains more options inside. The Services item has a class called Submenu Toggle, which makes it interactive. When users hover over it on desktop or tap it on mobile, a secondary UL element with the class drop-down appears. Inside the Services drop-down, there are three options, Web Design, Development, and SEO. But wait, there's more. The development option has its own nested dropdown. This is called a sub dropdown, meaning it's a sub menu inside a sub menu. It includes two more links, front end and back end, which users can access when hovering over or tapping development. Aside from the dropdown, the menu also has two more simple links, about us and contact. These don't have any sub menus, they just take users to their respective pages. Finally, at the bottom of the body, there's a script tag that links to script.js. This JavaScript file controls the interactive parts of the menu, like opening and closing the dropdowns when users click on them. The body of the web page is styled to use the Poppins font family, which is a modern sans serif typeface, and falls back to a generic sans serif font if Poppins is unavailable. The margin property is set to zero, which removes any default spacing around the body element that browsers apply by default. The background color of the body is a light gray shade, specifically a color code that represents a soft, neutral tone. The height of the body is set to 100 VH, meaning it takes up 100% of the viewport height, ensuring the page always fills the screen vertically. The nav bar is styled with a dark bluish background color and some padding on the top and bottom, 5 pixels and 30 pixels. Respectively, it uses Flexbox to arrange its items horizontally. The property display, Flex aligns the nav bar's content in a row. And justify content, space between ensures there is equal spacing between the items. The align items, Center vertically centers the items inside the nav bar. The nav bar's background color is specifically set to a deep bluish shade. The height of the nav bar is set to 35 pixels, and the font weight 600 makes the text bold. Inside the nav bar, the links A tags have the color set to light scion, making them stand out against the dark background. The text decoration, none property removes the underline that typically appears on hyperlinks, making them cleaner in appearance. Padding of 10 pixels on the left and right sides is applied to the links and width 100% ensures that the links take up the full width of their container. The menu is a list UL containing the navigation links, which are laid out horizontally. List style, none removes the default bullet points that browsers apply to unordered lists. The padding of zero ensures there is no extra spacing around the menu. The display, flex property ensures that the menu items, the Lee elements are aligned in a row, and justify content, flex and moves them to the far right of the navbar. The width auto lets the menu adjust its width according to the content inside. Each menu item LI has a relative position set using position relative, which is important for dropdowns to appear properly positioned within these list items. The width of each item is set to 150 pixels, giving each menu item a fixed width. 
For the links inside the menu items, the text is aligned to the center using Text Align Center. The Display Block property ensures that each link becomes a block element, meaning it takes up the full width of its container, the list item. The padding is applied to give some space around the text 10 pixel on top and bottom, 15 pixel on the left and right. The width 100% ensures the link takes up the entire width of the parent list item. The box sizing border box ensures that padding and border are included in the total width and height calculations for the link. When hovering over a link, the background changes to a bright pink color, indicating interactivity. For the drop-down menus, these are initially hidden using display, none. When shown, they are positioned absolutely under the parent menu item. The drop-down has a dark purple background and is styled similarly to the main menu, but it appears beneath the parent menu item. The position absolute means the drop-down will be positioned relative to the closest positioned ancestor, which in this case is the parently. The width 100% ensures that the drop-down takes up the full width of the parent item, and left 0 and top 100% position the drop-down directly below the parent menu item. The sub drop down, which is a secondary level of the drop down, is hidden by default with display none as well. It is also positioned absolutely, but to the right of the parent drop down, the background color is a slightly lighter purple than the parent drop down. It uses left 100% to position itself to the right of the drop down, and top 0 to align it with the top of the drop down. Now, the media query for screens larger then 768 pixels is set up to manage the drop-down menus on desktops or tablets. When the user hovers over a menu item that has a drop-down, the drop-down menu becomes visible with display block, and its width takes up 100% of the parent item. Similarly, when hovering over a drop-down item that has a sub-drop-down, the sub-drop-down appears. The background color of the sub-drop-down changes to a different purple shade to give users a visual cue. Position relative is applied to the drop-down items so nested drop-downs will align properly. The drop-down A, sub-drop-down A classes apply styles to the links inside both the drop-down and sub-drop-down menus. Each link has padding 10 pixels, providing space around the text for better readability and clickability. The display block property ensures that the links take up the full width of their container, making them easier to interact with, especially on touch devices. The text color is set to a light blue, ensuring good contrast against the dark background. The width 100% makes each link stretch across the full width of its parent element, creating a clean and structured layout. The box sizing border box property ensures that the padding and width are calculated together, preventing any unintended overflow or spacing issues. The drop-down a hover, sub-drop-down a hover classes define the hover effect for the drop-down and sub-drop-down links. When a user hovers over a link, the background color changes to light blue, providing a visual indication that the link is interactive and can be clicked. The submenu toggle class is applied to elements that trigger dropdowns and subdropdowns. It sets cursor pointer, ensuring that when users hover over a submenu toggle, the cursor changes to a pointer, signaling that the element is clickable. The menu toggle class applies styles to the menu toggle button, typically a hamburger icon used in mobile navigation. By default, it is hidden with display none, meaning it does not appear on larger screens. The font size 24 pixels makes the icon large enough to be easily tappable on mobile devices. The text color is set to light blue, ensuring visibility against the dark background. Lastly, cursor pointer is added to indicate that the menu toggle button is interactive and can be clicked to show or hide the menu. The media query begins with at media max with 768 pixels, meaning the following CSS will only apply when the screen width is 768 pixels or less. The menu class defines the styles for the navigation menu when the screen size is 768 pixels or smaller. It is initially set to display none, which hides the menu by default. The flex direction column ensures that the menu items are stacked vertically rather than horizontally, making it more suitable for smaller screen sizes. The width 100% makes the menu stretch across the full width of the screen, ensuring it's easily accessible. The background color is set to a dark shade, giving the menu a dark, cohesive look. The position, absolute, allows the menu to be positioned relative to its closest positioned ancestor and it is positioned top 28 pixels and left zero, which places the menu below the navbar and aligns it to the left edge of the screen. This setup ensures the menu is mobile friendly, taking up the full screen width and appearing right below the navigation bar when toggled. The menu Lee class sets the width of each list item Lee in the menu to 100%, meaning that each item will stretch across the full width of the menu container. This ensures that each menu item occupies the entire available space making them more clickable and easier to interact with on smaller screens. 
The menu LIA class targets the anchor links A within each list item and applies text align left, which aligns the text of the links to the left side of the container. Additionally, it applies padding left 40 pixels, adding some space between the left edge of the container and the text, making the links more visually balanced and easier to read. The menu dropdown class is used for the dropdown menu, and it sets padding left 0 pixels. This removes any extra indentation or padding that might have been applied to the drop-down menu items. Ensuring the drop-down aligns properly with the main menu items and doesn't have unnecessary spacing on the left side. This creates a cleaner and more compact appearance for the drop-down, especially on mobile screens. The drop-down LIA class applies to the anchor links inside the drop-down menu. It adds padding left 60 pixels, which creates an indentation for the drop-down links, helping visually separate them from the main menu items and signaling to the user that these are part of a nested menu. The background color gives the drop-down items a dark purple background, differentiating them from other elements in the menu. The menu sub drop-down class is used for the sub drop-down and it sets padding zero. This removes any extra padding applied to the sub drop-down, ensuring that the sub drop-downs links align neatly and don't have unnecessary space inside the container. The drop-down, sub drop-down Lee, a class targets the anchor links inside the sub drop-down. It applies padding, left 90 pixels, which indents the links even further compared to the drop-down links visually indicating that these items are part of an even deeper level of the navigation structure. The background color gives these sub drop-down links a slightly lighter purple shade, distinguishing them from the drop-down items. The drop-down sub drop-down Lee, a hover class applies a background color, a bright pink, when hovering over the links in the sub drop-down. This provides a visual cue for users, signaling that the link is interactive and can be clicked. The menu active class is used to toggle the visibility of the menu when it is activated. It changes the display property to flex, making the menu items visible when the user clicks the hamburger icon. The menu toggle class is set to display block, which makes the hamburger icon visible. This icon is used to toggle the visibility of the menu, and it is shown only when the menu is hidden. The drop-down, sub-drop-down classes define the default styles for both the drop-down and sub-drop-down menus. The position static property ensures that these menus follow the normal document flow meaning they will appear directly below the parent menu items rather than floating over them, which is how they behave on larger screens. The Display None property hides the drop-down and sub-drop-down menus by default, making them invisible until triggered by user interaction. The padding left 20 pixels adds some indentation to the content inside both the drop-down and sub-drop-down, ensuring that their links are positioned slightly inward from the left side, which helps to visually separate them from the parent menu items. The drop-down active, sub-drop-down active classes apply when the drop-down and sub-drop-down menus are triggered to be visible. The display block property makes these menus appear on the screen when they have the active class, allowing the user to interact with them. This is essential for the interactive behavior of the menus, where clicking a parent item reveals the nested drop-down or sub-drop-down beneath it. The first part of the JavaScript code is responsible for toggling the visibility of the mobile navigation menu when the hamburger icon is clicked. Here's the code for that. First, the document query selector menu toggle selects the element with the class menu toggle, which represents the hamburger icon. Next, the add event listener click function method attaches an event listener to this icon, so when it's clicked, the function inside will be executed. Inside this function, the document query selector menu selects the menu element, which represents the entire navigation menu. Then, class list toggle active is used to toggle the active class on the menu element. If the menu doesn't already have the active class, it will be added, making the menu visible. If the active class is already there, it will be removed, hiding the menu. This code essentially handles the mobile menu toggle functionality, allowing users to open and close the menu when they click the hamburger icon. The second part of the JavaScript code handles the multi-level drop-down behavior for the menu items that have sub -minus. This code begins by using document query selector all submenu toggle, which selects all elements with the class submenu toggle. These are the menu items that have submenus. The for each item method loops over each of these submenu toggle items. For each item, an event listener is attached using add event listener click function event, meaning the function will run when a user clicks any of these items. Inside this function, event prevent default is called to prevent the default behavior of the anchor tag, which is to navigate to a new page. Instead of navigating, the code below allows us to open and close the submenu. Next, let next element equals this. Next element, sibling, looks for the next sibling element of the clicked item, which is expected to be the submenu, either a dropdown or a sub dropdown. If this next element exists and is indeed a dropdown or sub dropdown, as checked by next element class list contains dropdown, 
or next element class list contains sub drop down. The code proceeds to toggle the active class on that sub menu. The next element class list toggle active line adds or removes the active class, which controls the visibility of the submenu. When the active class is present, the submenu is visible when it's removed. The submenu is hidden. This functionality enables multi-level dropdowns, so users can click a parent item to reveal its associated submenu, and clicking it again will hide the submenu. Now, let's see our multi-level dropdown navbar in action. In responsive mode, the menu adapts perfectly ensuring smooth navigation on any device, whether it's a smartphone, tablet, or desktop. Dropdowns open seamlessly, and submenus slide in effortlessly, making this navbar both functional and stylish. Now, switching to full screen mode, everything looks clean and well-structured, giving a professional touch to any website. With this navbar, your site's navigation will never be boring again. And that's a wrap. If you enjoyed this project and found it useful, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, drop a like leave a comment, and if you want exclusive access to source code and more awesome projects, consider supporting our Patreon. Every bit of support helps keep this channel running and bringing you high-quality, fun coding tutorials. See you in the next one.